So when a lot of people think about soccer in the state of Michigan, the first thought that comes up is Detroit City FC, and rightfully so, they've made quite their mark on lower league soccer in America. However, what if I told you that there is actually a professional soccer team in the state of Michigan that outdates Detroit City FC by almost 30 years? That team is called Michigan Stars Football Club, and today I'm going to tell you their story as well as show you around their home ground. Let's check it out. You can see the Michigan Stars Sports Center off in the distance right there. You can see all the, the cornfields or whatever that is growing right in between. Truly out in the country, out in the middle of nowhere. So this is actually the Michigan Star Sports Center right here. It's an indoor soccer field for them to play. Cause here in Michigan, we have pretty crappy weather for about eight months out of the year. So nice little indoor stadium for all the players to come play. And they got uh, youth academies too. As you can see, it says Elite Stars right there. That's for like the younger team. It says Michigan Stars Lightning right there. That's for one of their youth teams. That's why you see all the soccer fields off in the distance. Cause they have a bunch of youth teams too. It's pretty cool. You got a little pond right here, out in the middle of nowhere. Some people might not like it, but I think it's pretty peaceful and serene. So this is actually where you would go to get into the building. You can see their logo right there, Michigan Stars Sports Center. Michigan Stars Football Club. And that's where they're located, Washington Township, or Romeo. It's kind of like the same thing. You can see all their soccer fields off in the distance. See my truck parked over there, a couple grounds crew. Right in the middle there is their actual little like senior field. It's got um, artificial turf. So you see the grass all around, but right there it's like a little soccer oasis of artificial turf right there in the middle. I'll walk over and show you guys a little bit closer. So this is their little sports center that they got going on right here. You can see all of the football fields that they have. I'm not sure. I think this one, number five, is actually the, like the main one that they have. So they actually don't play their home games here. They play at Romeo High School. It's called uh, Barnabo Field. It's a little bit down the road here. I'm going to take you guys there and show you. Uh, however, this is more of like their spiritual home. They have played uh, home matches at the stadium. I wouldn't even really call it a stadium. It's kind of just like, I would say it's like parks and recs on steroids. So like every once in a while, they'll play a home game here. And all the parents and everybody will bring their lawn chairs and everything and just sit around the stands. And it's actually kind of cool. You'll just see like a thousand people with like lawn chairs and everything. And it's a little bit different and unique for professional soccer. I'm sure it's not the flavor of most people, but you know, I like different stuff. As you guys can see, like I said, it's like a little soccer oasis right here. I mean, you can even see the groundskeeper cutting the actual grass. See how many nets are off in the distance. But yeah, so this is like their little home away from home. If they can't use uh, Barnabo Field, this is where they would play. You can see, see the nice field turf. Everybody's favorite. You know, you can see the lines here, the offsides lines. And actually, if you come over here, you can see that it's even elevated off the ground just a little bit, just a couple inches. So they even got a little, some little stands right there. And actually, let me, let me take this time to tell you guys about the town that they play in. So Romeo, Michigan is actually located about an hour north of Detroit. I mean, it's directly north of Detroit. It has a population of only 3,700 people. So not very large at all. And some things that it's known for, it's actually the hometown of Kid Rock. 
Uh, it is also home to the Michigan Peach Festival, which is an annual festival celebrating peaches. It usually is at the end of the summer and actually has a soccer tournament, and which my brothers have actually played in before. And it's also known for a street, it's called Tillman Street. It's this street with a bunch of old houses on it. And it has like a lot of, it's about like a Halloween themed street. You see a lot of crazy decorations and around Halloween time, it really gets popping. But like I said, it's a town of only 3,700 people and it has a professional soccer team. And this right here, I guess, is what you would consider the press box. Whoop, almost dropped my, almost dropped it. Yeah, so this is like the little press box, I guess is what you would call. You climb up this ladder, kind of like this, it's unique. And this is where you would sit. I don't know if they stick the camera up here or what, but. All right, so a little bit about the almost 40 year history of the team. They started back in 1982 as Dearborn United. And then somewhere along the way, and I'm not sure I haven't really found like the connection here, but they moved to Windsor, Ontario in 1998. So there's not a lot of information about them pre-1998 online. They became the Windsor Spartans and they played there up until 2012 in which they moved back into the United States and they moved to Berkeley and they changed their name to FC Sparta, Michigan. So I think that was back when 300 was real popular and everyone was rolling with the Sparta, the Sparta thing. And they joined the NPSL, the National Premier Soccer League, which was the, and which was the fourth tier of soccer and still is the fourth tier. And then in 2014, they were purchased by Dearborn Sports Enterprise and they were rebranded as the Michigan Stars FC. And in 2018, George Junkaj bought 50% of the club and a year later he bought the other 50% making him the sole owner. And they were announced as an expansion side for NISA, the National Independent Soccer Association in 2019 along with their arch rivals Detroit City FC. A little bit about their accomplishments or lack thereof. Between 2013 and 2019, they never qualified for the playoffs one time. But once they joined uh, NISA, they would find a little bit more success. So the 2020 season, their first season that they joined NISA, it was actually canceled because of COVID. And they were supposed to be in the US Open Cup for the first time in 2020 and 2021, but both times the event was canceled because of COVID. And in their, their first appearance in the US Open Cup came on, it came in 2022, in which they lost three nothing to Detroit City FC. That game was a little controversial because after Detroit City FC scored the first goal, they let off their usual pink smoke and the Michigan Stars players claim that they couldn't see or they couldn't breathe in the smoke, which I'm gonna be honest, I mean, I don't, I don't see why they would be lying about that, but at the same time, the Detroit City FC players had to play in it too. So it caused a lot of controversy. The Michigan Stars owner, Georges Junkaj, released a statement the next day talking about how their players were, I don't even really know, I think he said they were harassed or something, something I don't even know. But it was just kind of a controversial game between the Michigan Stars owner and the Detroit City FC fans. Also, they don't like him because I think he's like a Trump supporter and I think he had a rally here for Trump one time. So, you know, it's actually a little bit of a political rivalry too, which is something that you don't see very often in American sports. That's usually reserved for more over overseas. I wouldn't say it's necessarily like the main topic of the rivalry, but it's a little bit of extra spice, you know, that they add in a little bit of, you know, right versus left which again you don't find that in american sports so all right let's talk a little bit about some of their actual accomplishments so on september 21st 2020 they got their first win over their arch rivals detroit city fc when they beat them two nothing at keyworth and actually that year 
they went 1-0-2 against DCFC. So they beat them and they drew against them. So in three games, they didn't lose to Detroit City FC. And But then in the fall season the next year, they would lose both games to DCFC and they ended up finishing 7th out of 10th. And right now, today, as of Wednesday, June 28th, they are fifth in the table. I don't know, it's kind of hard for you guys to see that, but they're on 12 points. But they've only played six games so far. So maybe they can make up some ground here. And I think the, what is that? I'm not sure if the top four teams make it or if the top six teams make it. If it's the top six, they'd be in the playoffs right now. If it's the top four, they'd be right outside. But like I said, they're behind on everybody else in games. So right now they're on 12 points. They've played six games. They've won three, drew three, and, and lost none. So not a bad start to the season for them. So I'd like to take this time and talk about the club's greatest achievement, which was actually just very recently. So in 2022, they would go on to win the NISA championship. They finished in third place on 38 points with 10 wins, eight draws, and only five losses. And that year in the playoffs, they defeated the Syracuse Pulse right here in Romeo. Then in the semifinals, they went down to Chattanooga FC, who might be the most established team in the NISA. They've Chattanooga FC have played in front of like 10,000 supporters before in some of their playoff games. They were kind of like the talk of the the lower tiered soccer world along with Detroit City FC over these last 10 years. That's pretty cool. The Michigan Revolution is just kind of like the New England Revolution logo. <clears throat> Here's a lot more of their practice fields though. You can see all the numbers. But they would go down to Chattanooga and they would win one nothing. What a big win for that club to go down to Chattanooga, one of the more established lower tiered professional soccer teams in America and to pull out a 1-0 win. And then they came back here to Romeo at the Barnabo High School and they would beat Albion San Diego 1-0 to lift their very first NISA trophy. So this is the stadium they play at. It's called Barnabo Field. It's just right down the road, probably like a six minute drive from the Michigan Star Sports Center. This is Romeo High School's football stadium, their you know, track and field stadium. And it's also the Michigan Star Stadium. See it says Barnabo Field right there. Let's see if we can see anything that says Michigan Stars. Oh, there's their state championship team. And they actually beat the high school that I went to, Clarkston, in that playoff run. I remember it. There's a little concession stand for everybody. You gotta love it. Everything is still under $3. So this stadium, it was actually renovated in 2016 for the high school team. As you can see the little bulldog right here, their mascot. Something pretty cool too, is it actually shows you the crossroads where the stadium's at, right in the stadium. So it looks like they took down the road signs and they just put it up here. And that's where all the fans sit right there. They don't get a crazy amount of fans, if I'm being honest with you. Usually the away stands are empty. But yeah, and you can see the soccer nets. You can even see a couple players off in the background playing. I don't know if they're part of the Michigan Stars team or not. They look kind of young. <laughs> 